Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Okay, so today we will continue with a new chapter, which is chapter 4, Digital Communication System. Okay. So these are the sub-chapters for chapter 4. So basically it consists of uh, 4.1 introduction to digital communication system, digital modulation technique, pulse modulation and the last one introduction to practical digital communication system. Okay so for chapter 4 part 1 we will cover from 4.1 until 4.2. So 4.3 will be covered in part 2 and 4.4 .4 is in part 3. Okay, so basically uh, for final exam, all of these 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 are all covered. However, 4.4 .4 is actually a new sub-chapter that we included for this uh, subject. Okay, so 4.4 .4 is basically an additional sub-chapter uh, in order to let you familiarize the applications for digital communication system. Okay, so the applications that we are focusing in sub-chapter 4.4 .4 is satellite digital communication system. So now let's directly continue to the first subchapter, Introduction to Digital Communication System. So the um, definition of digital communication stated here is the transmittal of digital signals between two or more points in a communication system. So basically, the definition is similar to the definition of communication system in chapter one. However, for this one, it is focusing on digital signals. Next, the signals for digital communication can be binary or any other form of discrete level digital pulses. And the original source can be in digital form and it can also be in analog signals. However, if the original source in is in analog signals, then it needs to be converted into digital pulses before the transmission. Next, digital communications require physical facility, for example, pair of wires, coaxi cable, optical fiber cable, and etc. So these digital pulses cannot be propagated through a wireless transmission. Okay, so this is very important for you to take note that digital pulses cannot be propagated through a wireless transmissions. Okay, for example, the Earth's atmosphere of free space. Okay, so in order to overcome this, analog carrier modulation is necessary in order for the signal to be propagated through a wireless transmission. So this figure shows the transmission schemes for analog and digital signals. So the first one here, this is the analog signal with no modulations. So you have analog input and you have the analog output, okay? And you don't have any modulator or demodulator. You transfer the information directly without modulation. The second one is a standard analog modulation system. So this is the one that you have learned in chapter two and chapter three, okay? So you have the analog input and the output is also in analog. And the transmission from input to output is an analog channel. Okay, and you need to have the modulator and the demodulator. Next is the digital transmission on digital scheme. So for this one, the input here is in digital form. 
the output is in digital form and the transmission is through a digital channel. So you need a coder and a decoder. So this is, this will be covered in chapter four. Next, we have the digital transmission on analog scheme. So the difference between C and D is that you still have the digital input, you still have the digital output. However, the transmission process is in analog. Okay, then you need a modem. Okay, so this is basically the difference. This is using a digital channel. This is using analog channel. Next is the analog transmission digital channel. Okay, where you have an analog input, analog output. However, you want to transmit the signal through a digital channel. Then you need a analog to digital uh, coder and also decoder and digital to analog. A to D converter and D to A converter. And the last one is the digitized analog signal transmission on analog scheme. So for this one, you have the analog input and then you convert it into digital. Okay. And then you convert it to analog, convert it to digital again, then convert it to analog. Okay. So these are the, uh, some of the trans several types of transmission schemes for analog and digital signals. So basically, uh, digital transmission has a lot of advantages if compared to analog transmission. So the first one, okay, and the most important one is that it is immune to noise and interference, meaning it has low noise. It's very, it has very low error rates and high fidelity. So fidelity is the ability uh, for the system to replicate the original signal. Okay, and the digital transmission can carry a combination of traffics and it is easier and more efficient to multiply several digital signals. And uh, the digital hardware implementation is flexible and lastly, it is more economical. However, it still has a disadvantages and the main one is that it, has, it requires a significantly wider bandwidth. Okay, and next, it is uh, requires additional encoding and decoding circuitries in order to convert analog signal to digital and vice versa. Next, it requires precise time synchronization. And lastly, it is in compatibility with older analog transmission system. Okay. So meaning it cannot work with older transmission system that's still using analog transmission. So next, let's look into what is, uh, let's look into several parameters that we will deal with, with uh, in chapter four, with digital communication. So these are the parameters, MRA, MRA, bits, bit rate, and also baud rate. So the first one is bit, or we also call it as binary digit. So the bit here is the most basic digital symbol used to represent information. And the bit rate is the number of bits that can be transmitted in one second. So the unit for bit rate is bits per second. Number of bits that can be transmitted in one second. Next we have M array. So this word M array here is actually derived from the word binary. Okay, bi, this is two, binary. So M here is actually uh, represents the number of conditions or level. Okay, for example, uh, for a digital signal with four conditions, then the M is equals to four. For a digital signal with eight conditions, then the M is equals to eight. 
Next, we can also calculate the number of bits necessary to produce a given number of conditions and this can be expressed as n equals to log 2m. Okay, so m is the number of condition and n is the number of bits necessary to produce a given number of conditions. Next is board. So board is the measure of how many times per second a signal changes or could changes in a second. Okay, so look at here, how many times per second a signal changes or could changes. So if you look at example one, okay, it stated that uh, a typical serial port one bit is negative 12 volts and zero bit is positive 12 volt. So if the bits per second is 38,400, the sequence of 010101 would also be 38,400 volt since the voltage shifts back and forth from positive to negative to positive and there are 38,400 shifts per second. So let's say you have another sequence, say 11100011. So this, there will be fewer shifts of voltage since there are three ones in sequence. Okay, so you have three ones in sequence. So the voltage just stays at negative 12 because it's a one bit. Okay, yet we say that it is still 38,400 baht since there is a possibility that the number of changes per second will be that high. Okay, so we, will st we still state that it is 38,400 baht because of the possibility. So this goes back to the definition of baht. It is how many times per second a signal changes or could changes. So next, this is example two. Suppose that a change have more than two possible outcomes of the previous example of positive negative 12 volt. So for example, you have four possible outcomes where negative 12 volt could be zero zero, negative six volt could be zero one, positive six volt is one zero, and positive 12 volt is one one. So here, the bit rate is double the board rate. Why? For example, 3,000 changes per second will generate two bits for each change, resulting in 6,000 bits per second. So in other words, 3,000 board results in 6,000 bits per second. So if you look at here, basically, when the level is changes, basically there will be two bits changes because you have two bits. Okay, one, one, this is two bits. One, zero is two bits. Zero, one is two bits and zero, zero is two bits. So when the level changes, there will be two bit changes. So that's why the bit rate is double the board rate. So uh, define here, board is one over TS where TS is the time of one signaling elements in second. So if you look at here, this figure here, uh, this is a one signal element. Okay, And this is two data elements. So basically you have two data elements in one signal element. Okay, so for this one, it is actually you have two data elements and one signal element. So two divided by one, so you will get two. For this one, you have four data elements in a three signal elements. So that's why you have R equals to four divided by three. So the board rate depends on the modulation and coding technique used. Okay, for this one, you have one signal element, one data element in one signal element. So this is basically R equals to
So this is actually R equals to 1 divided by 1. So you will get R equals to 1. And for this one, you have one data element for two signal elements. So R equals to 1 over 2. Next uh, is the Nyquist bit rate. Okay, so H. Nyquist stated that rate uh, noiseless transmission medium at a rate equal to times to two times the bandwidth of the medium. Okay, so it stated that uh, binary digital signals can be propagated through an ideal noise, noiseless transmission medium at a rate equal to two times the bandwidth of the medium. So F equals to 2 bandwidth to B. So this is the minimum Nyquist bandwidth. Okay, Nyquist bit rate. However, the actual bandwidth is necessary to propagate for a given bit rate depends on the type of encoding, modulation technique, filter, system noise, and desired error performance. And this Nyquist bandwidth is just only used for comparison purpose only. But so the previous one, if you if you only have one level signaling, but if you have multiple multi-level signaling, then the Nyquist bit rate will become 2B log 2M. Okay, so B is the bandwidth and M is the number of discrete level or voltage level. And if you arrange this equation for, you can actually calculate for B, which is the bandwidth necessary to pass MRA digitally modulated carrier. So B equals to Nyquist bit rate divided by log 2, number of discrete signal. Then you know that, previously you know that uh, log 2m is equals to n, number of bits. So if you substitute n, the value will become b equals to fb divided by n. And since bot is the encoded rate of change, it is also equals the bit rate divided by, divided by the number of bits encoded into one signaling elements. So if you look at here, the formula for the bandwidth and also the bot is the same. So the bot and minimum Nyquist bandwidth have the same value and this holds true for all forms of digital modulation except frequency shift scheme except for FS key. Okay. Except for FS key. For the others, amplitude shift keying, phase shift keying, you can use this formula. This formula is the same for bandwidth and also for the board. Next is the Shannon capacity for noisy channel. So we know that in real life, we cannot have a system that is noise, noiseless, okay, meaning no noise at all. So this Shannon capacity is used to determine the theoretical highest data rate for a noisy channel. So the equation, the formula is given by bandwidth multiplied with log to one plus signal to noise ratio. So in channel formula, there is no indication of signal levels, meaning there is uh, no M in the formula. So it means that no matter how many levels we have, we cannot achieve a data rate higher than the capacity of the channel. So it's not, we, we don't consider the signal levels, okay? So the conclusion is the Shannon capacity gives the upper limit and the Nyquist bit rate determine how many signals levels is needed. So for example, for this example, you are given 
bandwidth equals to 20 kilohertz and you have a signal to noise ratio of zero and you have uh, digital data at two signal levels which is m equals to two so the first one you need to determine the bit rate so the formula for the Nyquist bit rate is uh, we have fb equals to 2b log 2m so 2 20k log 2m so log 2 log 2 will become 1 so the final answer is 40 kilobits per second next for the information capacity so c is b log 2 1 plus signal to noise ratio so 20k log 2 1 plus zero so log one you will get zero so zero multiplied with 20k is zero okay so that's the end for the introduction to digital communication so now let's look into the digital modulation technique so basically, there are four types of digital modulation technique. Okay. Um, so the first one is amplitude shift keying. So amplitude shift keying is when the amplitude of the carrier, so this is the amplitude of the carrier, is very proportional to the information signal. Next, we have frequency shift keying. So it is when the frequency this is the frequency of the carrier is very proportional to the information signal. And the third one, phase shift keying, is the phase of the carrier is very proportional to the information signal. And the last one, we have the quadrature amplitude modulation, where is basically when the amplitude and phase are very proportional to the information signal. So, however, in this subject, we will only uh, go through uh, for the amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and the phase shift keying only. So, now let's look at the first one, amplitude shift keying. So, it actually modulates the amplitude of the analog carrier. So, this is the modulated carrier signal equation. So you have VSK equals to 1 plus VMT A over 2 cos omega CT. Okay. So this is the amplitude shift keying wave. This VMT is the modulating signal. A over 2 is the unmodulated carrier amplitude. And omega C is the analog carrier radian frequency. So in the equation 9, modulating signal, you can see that this modulating signal here it is a normalized binary waveform. So for positive vote, uh, we will consider it as logic one. If it is negative vote, we will consider it as logic zero. Okay. So what happens is that, so you know that, uh, For logic one, the input VM will become positive one. So this is VM. However, for logic zero, the VM will become negative one. Okay, so this is VM, negative one. So what happens is that when the logic, when you have a logic one input, okay, so this part, one plus one will become two. Okay, so we can cancel 2 and 2 
So the final answer you will get A cos omega ct. However, for logic zero input, this will become uh, zero. Okay, and the final answer you will get equals to zero. Okay, because it's the cos cos uh, is the sine cos wave. So the modulated wave is either a cos omega ct or zero. Okay, means the carrier is either on or off. This is on, this is off. So ASK is also sometimes referred as an on-off key or OOK. So this figure here, you can see there. Look at here. So this is your carrier signal. This is your modulating signal. Okay. So this is carrier signal. So your modulating signal is in binary. You have 1010 zero, one, zero, and so on. So what happens is that when the VM here is logic one, then you will have a carrier signal here. However, you have you will have the A cos omega ct here. However, when there, the logic is zero, so the VSK here will become zero and so on. Same for this one, okay? For example, this is your VM, okay? Then the output will become, uh, for logic one, you will have a, a cos omega ct, but when logic zero, this will become zero. This will become A cos omega ct. So you can see that uh, the uh, amplitude of the ampli uh, modulated ASK is dependent on the modulating signal. Okay, the amplitude. So here, if the modulating signal logic is one, then you have the uh, amplitude not equals to zero. However, when the logic signal is zero, then the amplitude will become zero. So it is it affects the amplitude. Next, we have the frequency shift key. So this is the general app, uh, expression for FSK. So you look at here, now the VMT is here. So it is basically affecting the frequency. So previously is located in front where it affects the amplitude. Okay. So from equation 10, the peak shift in the carrier frequency delta F is proportional to the amplitude of the binary input signal VM. So if the VM is uh, high, then delta F, this value will become high. Okay. And vice versa. So the direction of the shift is determined by the polarity of signals one or zero. So same for this one, the VMT is normalized binary waveform where logic one is positive one and logic zero is negative one. So if we substitute, okay, so for logic one input, uh, the VMT will become positive 1. So that's why this is positive. And if for logic 0 input, then VMT will become negative 1. So that's why this is negative. Because in front here, uh, you actually have your VMT. So the carrier center frequency F she is shifted up and down, depending on the modulating signal. So you look at here, so you have two carrier wave. So this is VC for logic one. This is carrier for logic zero. 
Okay, so you have two uh, frequent, uh, VC with different frequency. And this is your VMT. Okay, 0101. So what happens is that, so when the VM is logic one, then it will follow the VC for logic one. But when the uh, VM is logic zero, then it will follow the VC for logic zero. Okay, and so on. So you can see that the frequency is changes. So this is low, low frequency, this is high frequency. So it changes the frequency, low, high, low, high, and so on, depending on the modulating signal. Okay, so this is the frequency shift keying. It changes the frequency. So same for this one. Same for this one, this is your modulating signal. You have 0, 1, 0, 1, and this is the output. So your output will become, uh, the frequency will change. It's low frequency, high frequency, low frequency, high frequency, and so on, depending on the input. And the third one is the phase shift scheme. So phase shift scheme actually alters the phase of the Carrier, it changes the phase. So as the input digital signal changes state from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1, the phase of the output carrier shifts between two angles that are separated by 180. So if you look at here, this is your carrier. This is your modulating signal. So the output here, when the modulating signal is logic 1, then it will follow the carrier signal. But when you have a logic zero here, it will change the phase. So that's why instead of, instead of like this, it changes the phase 180 degrees. Okay, then when you have a logic one again, then it changes the phase again. Okay, but if you have a uh, zero zero, meaning uh, the phase is not changing. Okay, so that's why for this part, the phase is not changing because the uh, the base here is zero zero. Okay, so the phase for this part is not changing. So this is phase shift keying; it changes the phase. Okay, so same for this one, it changes the phase depending on the modulating signal or the input signal. Okay, so that is basically the end of chapter one, part one. So next, uh, this is pulse modulation. So if you look at the uh, syllabus, previous, the, the ones, uh, in the first slide, uh, in the second slide. So uh, this is pulse modulation is actually will be covered in the next video, which is chapter four, part two. So you must uh, take note, yeah? Digital modulation technique and pulse modulation is different. So digital modulation consists of amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, phase shift keying, and pulse modulation consists of uh, pulse width modulation, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse position modulation, and pulse code modulation. Okay, it, it is different, digital and pulse. So 4.3, we will cover in the next uh, video. So this one, so next video, I will start with uh, this slide, slide number 26 in uh, chapter 4, part 1. Okay. Okay, so I think that's all for today's lecture. So we will continue. 4.3 in the next video lecture. Okay, so thank you.